patterns are going to be interested in that aspect we will be uh, looking at this issue of time so the very first aim of putting data mining functionalities was we need to understand the two words one we call it as characterization two we will call it as a discrimination so when we are going to talk about data mining functionality data mining functionalities the first and foremost way was we need to have the understanding about uh, concept and class description where we will talk mostly on the characterization next we will talk about uh, uh, discrimination so what is characterization and what is discrimination so this is the point what we need to understand so coming to the word characterization and then the word called as discrimination one word we are going to call it as characterization another word we want to say it is discrimination so assume that uh, we have assume that we have two rectangles assume that we have two rectangles here rectangle 1 and two another rectangle here so now when we are talking about characterization one we are going to call and here we are going to uh, fill up we are going to uh, fill up the content we will be totally fill up in the content as this follows so now we have two rectangles at this point of time now what are the characteristics if we are going to highlight at this model first one i can say the length two we are going to call it as width three we are going to call it as a color based on that we will be getting the area so the characters for the first rectangle the characters for the second rectangle so you can say the first character is length second character is width and third character is color and fourth character we are going to call it as area so this is what we call here as a characterization then what is discrimination so at this case i can say length is equals to 10 cm here width is equals to 4 cm and color is equals to i can say it is white but now if i am going to take the same rectangle then i am going to say length so length we can assume it is going to be some 7 cm then i will be calling it as some width so width i am going to call it as 3 cm then i am going to call it as color color it is going to be some red and in this way discriminate so i am going to compare the similarities followed by dissimilarities i am going to compare both the similarities 
followed by the dissimilarities if it is going to be similarities i will be calling it as a rectangle if it is going to be dissimilarities then i can say height width length area color so in this way i am going to find the characteristics after finding the characteristics i can mention in what dimension the first rectangle is going to be different from the second rectangle so that is what we are going to call here as a discrimination so characteristics yeah i have this color pen pen color so pen color is black then i can say height is this much width is this much then again i am going to take this define the characteristics of this pen then i can say this is a blue color then it is of this much length this is of this much width this is of this much height then i am going to say okay compare first pen with second pen so the color of the first pen is blue the color of the second pen is black so you found the discrimination similarly the height of the first pen is different from the height of the second pen the width of the first pen is different from the width of the second pen so in this way you are going to take two attributes and thereby what you are going to tell us what are the common in so common in sense i am going to call it as pens then what is the difference their color their length their width so these items are going to be different we are going to call those items as a discrimination so after discrimination after discrimination the next word what we are going to uh, mention was correlation the third word what we bring here was correlation so when we are going to talk about correlation the first and foremost item what we need to bring at this case will be the association among the two items will be the association among the two items so obviously first of all we are going to call it as association in association we will identify relationship between two attributes between two attributes we are going to identify the association so assume that there is a table assume that there is a table then i am going to call in this model first we are going to call it as customer id then i can say item 1 item 2 item 3 and item 4 so four items are going to be part of it. so if such is a case we are going to consider assume it is 1001 1002 1002 so obviously it is some pen books pencil and we can say some other item similarly 1002 is going to be an another item he is going to purchase some bread butter jam and milk so some stationeries here so what we are going to look at this aspect was the buying habit of the customer so person who buys pen he is also buying books the person who is also buying books he is also buying the pencil so now you can see attribute 1 we can see attribute 1 attribute 2 so this is what we are going to know the buying habit buying habit of the customer so again there is another customer he is going to purchase some bread then he is going to purchase some butter then he is going to purchase some jam so obviously what here the main intention was what was the pattern here the pattern was we have to relate two or 
more attributes we need to relate two or more attributes in the transaction we need to relate two or more items in the transaction and those two or more items we are going to call here as a frequent items so when we are going to purchase frequent items so i can say bread and then i can say jam so we will project the statistic calculation that is what we are going to call it as correlation when we are going to say it is a word called as a correlation now how much how much bread how much jam both are going to be associated or both of them having a relationship between them we are going to identify that is what we call here as a correlated item how much value how much success how much confidence how much support we are going to tell that value we are going to call here as a correlation so correlation in statistics will be between 0 and 1 correlation in statistics will be between 0 and 1 so if it is towards 0 obviously the first item is very much related to uh, if it is related to towards one we can say the association is going to be very strong if the value is less than 0.5 or it is going to be greater than 0.5 towards zero or towards one you need to put so if it is greater than 0.5 and towards one then we can say there is a strong association ship if we are going to take the value which is between 0 and to 0.5 then we can say the correlation between the two attributes is very low so in this way we are going to find the frequent item set thereby we are going to make association thereby we are able to get some prediction some pattern so that we will make what type of items are correlated with another item so such is what we are going to say finding the uh, finding the most frequent items in the pattern one second somebody i have to admit so association the more aim is to find a pattern is to relate first attribute with the second attribute so now here you can see one of an association rule so the person we can say his name was x his name was x see here the first person so the first person you can see here the person who is going to buy a computer the person who is going to buy a computer definitely he will buy a software right so you purchase your laptop obviously you purchase a ubuntu operating system or a windows operating system or you purchase some uh, word uh, microsoft office or you will purchase a um, antivirus software so but this is by default so if you are going to purchase a laptop definitely you will buy windows operating system this is a rule so this is what a people are going to say on what is the support and what is the confidence you are going to tell it is with confidence of 1% it is with confidence of 50% and which is of supporting of 1% that means if a person he is going to buy a computer there is a chance that she will buy the software also that is how did you do it i did how did how you are making the statement because one persons of the transaction under analysis shows the computer and confidence are going to be related with one another so you found an association ship what was the association ship was the association the uh, correlation or an association what you are going to say was that is the computer is going to be associated with the software 
computer is going to be associated with the software so you mentioned it therefore we are going to say there is a strong association ship between the first attribute and the second attribute fine we talked about three terms today first term we call it as characterization second term we call it as discrimination third term we coined it as association now let us look at the fourth and fifth terms that is what we are going to call it as classification thereby we will be calling it as prediction so when we are going to take the concept of classification obviously it will take characteristics then it will take discrimination when we are going to talk about classification it will definitely talk about characteristics to which class it is going to belong with a label and then it is going to use the word called as a discrimination so when we are going to call it as classification we will call this item as supervised learning supervised learning so in this supervised learning what we are going to do is we will have class labels we will have class labels and in this class label how we are going to do is we are going to make this with the rules based on association or rules based on condition what we are going to do is we are going to make rules based on association or based on a uh, condition how is it working so assume that i am going to have labels i am going to have labels so csca is going to be one label csca is going to be one label csb is going to be an another label csc is going to be another label so these items we are going to call as classes these items we are going to call the items as classes here now conditions so what is condition means if register number is between 0 to 565 if register number is going to be between 0 to 565 to which basket i have to move means i have to move this to csc a else if register number is between 566 to 5c9 if the register number is between 566 to 5c9 then i am going to move this to csc b label or csc c class similarly if the register number is greater than or equals to is greater than or equals to 5d not then you have to move this into cscc so what is classification means or what is supervised learning means we are going to have some characters we are going to have some characters so what is character the register number 501 to 565 is going to be a character and next thing we need to discriminate we need to discriminate how we are going to discriminate we are going to discriminate via the rules we are going to make correlation we are going to make association and thereby we are going to make discrimination how we are going to discriminate the discrimination what we are going to show here was if the register number is between 501 to 565 you put that girl in a basket called as cscb if the register number is between 566 to 569 put the girl in the database which it is going to be in cscb label similarly if it is going to be the register number it is greater than or equals to 5d not 
then move her to the third classification called as CSCC. So now let us look at the definition so that we will have clear cut understanding of what is classification. So this is the process of finding a model that it is going to describe and distinguish the data classes or concepts that we are going to able to make some predictions of the objects which are going to be unknown. So assume that I am going to put this rule at this point of time. So if a new content, if the new content is going to happen, so obviously I'm going to put some rules 501 to 565. So assume 544 came. So obviously moving her to the first segment. Assume that it is 5B9 is going to come, then moving her into second basket or second database. Similarly, if there is some 5E not coming, so obviously we are moving into the third database, CSCC. So if a new item is going to come, to which rule it is going to fit, obviously we are moving into it. So how we are going to do it means we are going to do it via characterization or via it is going to be done with the discrimination. So this is what we are going to assume. So we are going to assume at this model. So while we are going to work with the classification, the most important thing was it is going to be represented with classification rules that too, especially it is using some models or it is going to use some algorithms. So what is a model means? We have Bayesian, we have Neo-Bayesian, we have decision trees or we have random forest or we will have support vector machine or we will be having some neural networks so using any of an algorithm we will classify an object to which class it is going to belong because the labels are going to be known and that concept we are going to call it as a supervised learning so the first we talked about one, we call it as characterization. So assume I told this as a pen, it is in red, it is in a black color. The length is this much, the width is this much, the height is this much. Then we mentioned that discrimination. We call there is an another pen, which it is going to a blue color. So this falls in a blue basket, this falls in a red basket, in a black basket. In this way, we made characteristics then we made discrimination. So how did I do it means it is going to be done with a classification machine learning algorithm. So it is doing upon some uh, rules like if then else or decision trees or Bayesian or uh, SVM etc. So this is the third primitive what we have to understand. The next one was prediction. The next concept what we have to look was prediction. So before we are going to move it into a prediction model, here is an example what the authors are going to uh, describe with some example. So here you can see uh, age of X. He is, belongs to youth group and he belongs to this is condition number one. Condition number one and his income is high. Then he belongs to a class called as A. And if his income is low, obviously he belongs to a class called as B. And if his income, uh, if he is going to be a middle-aged person, then he, he is going to be pushed into a class group called as C. Similarly, if he is going to be again a senior, so it is going to be at between uh, uh, C group. So assume it is between youth. So obviously we can uh, assume it is between some uh, 10 to 30. So obviously you can call this as a youth. Then 30 to 50, assume you can call it as a middle age. And if it is going to be some 50, you are going to call it as a senior here. So what was the thing? The first thing he is going to be middle aged, you put him in class C. He is going to be a senior, you put him in class C. Similarly, if he is going to have uh, an income of high and he is youth, you put him in class A. If he is youth, that is between age, 
the age is going to be between 10 to 50 and his income is low you put him in b so this is what we are going to put conditions or we are going to call it as characteristics and putting these classes we are going to call it as discrimination so we are based on the features based on the characteristics we are able to divide the people into youth middle class and senior and then we discriminate them into four classes class a belongs to high income with youth class b with high in with low income with youth then class c with middle age and class d with the senior so in this way we are going to pull up the four things so now you can see here uh, a decision tree a decision tree here so what was the first thing we are going to say the label is going to be with age so age is going to have conditions age is, is going to have some conditions here so what was the condition of the uh, age so age condition you can assume that it is going to be uh, either youth or it is going to be either middle aged or either it is going to be some uh, senior it is going to be some youth or it is going to be some middle aged or it is going to be senior so that, that is why you represented middle aged comma you mentioned a comma at this place so middle aged comma senior so because you have only three categories one youth two you call it as middle aged three you call it as senior so you put a comma here next again you look at the income here income he is going to divide it into two fields one high class and low class so income it is divided into two rules either it is high or either it is low then uh, then he is discriminating the things a class b class and c class so this is a class and b class and if it is with middle or senior it is going to be pushed into the c class so this is how a characteristics or a discrimination is mentioned i just mentioned our customized example that is if the register number is between 0 to 565 move it into the label called as casca if it is between 66 to c9 move it into the b basket similarly if it is greater than 5 greater than or equals to 5d not push that into the database called as c so that is what we are going to use rules and after applying rules we are able to make a discrimination then the according to the definitions of a classification classification it is going to be a model next it is going to meet up if then else then it is going to meet up decision trees and finally it is going to work with the neural networks it is also settled up with solving the problems using neural networks so here is an example what you can see here the first function is dealing with uh, age the first function it is going to deal with age the second function is going to deal with income first function dealing with the age second function dealing with income so these two are going to decide the rules either it is a either it is b and either it is c so class a class b and class c we are going to call it as labels which we are going to say it is predefined therefore we are going to call it as classification the pet name for the classification we are going to call it as supervised learning so we have predefined inputs we have predefined outputs what are the inputs we know what are the outputs we know but we should have hidden layers hidden layers so if the hidden layers are more then the accuracy of the classifier will be high if the hidden layers are less the classification accuracy may be less so it is determined by the domain expert it is determined by the data scientist by the data miner so he the young generation engineers while they are going to work on the algorithm they have their mind own algorithm how many number of hidden layers i should put first of all they will try with the maximum uh, with the minimum so they 
Okay, we will observe this much is the accuracy is coming. Why not I increase two more hidden layers? What is the answer? In this way, they will go with the trial and error. At one point of time, the answer will be settled down. The answer will be settled down. So there is many number of hidden layers are needed for the neural network algorithm to give a good classification output. So this is how a neural network strategy is going to be feasible in order to find predictions of the associated algorithm. Next word. Cluster analysis. The next word in the data mining functionalities we are going to call as a cluster analysis. Up to now what we were telling was I know number of inputs, I know number of outputs, I have to give hidden layers and the labels class A, class B, class C are known. Everything I know, therefore we are going to call it as supervised learning. This is the takeaway, then we are going to work with the classification algorithm. But now we are now putting one more new word called as a cluster analysis. So in this cluster analysis, we have to put these samples or we have to group the samples in form of new classes. At this case, we are going to call it as unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning. So the first primitive, when we are going to talk about cluster analysis, we are going to call this item as unsupervised learning. So in unsupervised learning, we don't know number of classes or labels. So there is no prior information. There is no prior information. How many number of classes are there? How many number of labels are there? Everything we have to construct on our own. Everything we have to construct on our own. So there is no prior information. So that is why we call this as unsupervised learning. We say no class labels. We have to build our own classes. So we have to build our own clusters. We have to build our own grouping of data. How can I do that? How can I build my class? How can I group data to this? So grouping data will be done with two important words. One we are going to call it as intra-cluster similarity. Another we are going to call it as inter-cluster similarity. One, we are going to call it as intra-cluster similarity, then with the inter-cluster similarity. Okay, before taking these terms, how are these terms to be classified? That means the maximizing intra
So is the screen visible? Can you acknowledge? Is the screen visible or not? Yes, sir, it is visible. Sir. Is my screen? Yeah, yeah, fine. So there is some connection problem. So you can uh, welcome back to the class. So we were talking about the cluster analysis. So the main intention of cluster analysis was that we need to group the items. So while grouping that, we were not able to redefine information. So on our own, we have to build the classes. We have to frame our own characters. We have to frame our own similarities and we have to make the own discrimination. So that is the reason why it is not with a guru. You have to go like a Akalavya, where we are going to say it is an unsupervised learning. So in there is no class labels. So as there are no class labels, we are, can say it is having a property of maximizing intra-cluster similarities and minimizing inter-cluster similarities. So here is an example what you can see here. There are a lot of samples here. There are some lot of sample uh, data here. In this sample data, you can uh, visualize it is going to have some three or, four or five. Trend of sets with the game. I checked on it. 125 students. 25 students. On the, uh, I very link to join it. Fine. So this is what the uh, discussion was. That is, we are talking about the sample data. In this sample data, now we have to apply characteristics. We have to apply characteristics or we have to apply similarities. So what is the similarity here was it is go for Discrimination we are going to make with the word color. So now you can see here the uh, blue, it is going to be, then I'm going to call it as another violet. 
at another class level yellow one class level then red i am going to go to a class level now we are going to make classes four they are is so now you can see that the difference between the violet color and the yellow color is different the difference between red color and blue is different the red difference between red and yellow is different now such is what we are going to call it as inter class similar now you can see here cross mark of x is at one shape cross mark of another x is at another shape this cross mark is at another shape so now the similarities between these items you need to identify we call it as intra while we work on the uh, clustering concept So this was the takeaway at this case. Next word, outlier analysis. So the next primitive of what data mining we have to understand was the word called as an outlier analysis. So the data do not comply with the regular behavior of the model. The data do not comply with the regular or a general behavior of the model. And these outliers, they will be totally discarded. Or we are going to say those we are going to make an exemption. So that is where the outlier is going to uh, make its uh, footprints. So when we are going to say it is an outlier, it does have an extreme behavior and this extreme behavior will not fit it in any way of normal structure. So when we are going to call here as an outlier, then we are going to call here as an outlier analysis outlier analysis so i can say that uh, attendance so attendance i can say it is 40% 50% 60% 70% Eighty percent and ninety percent. So I can say it is one hundred, and it is thirty percent, twenty percent, ten percent, and zero percent. So I have roll number five zero one, roll number five zero two, roll number five zero three, roll number five zero four, five zero five. So now roll number five zero two, her attendance was thirteen percent. Roll number five zero three, her attendance was twenty five percent. And this is girl was 75%, this girl was 80%, and this girl was 90%. So now I'm going to put a rule. I'm going to put a rule, and that should be greater than 50%. And that it is should be greater than 50% is a rule. So obviously, now I'm going to say 501, 504, and 505. Now these three are going to fit the rule and we are going to call them as normal behavior. But when I'm going to put in another group called as 502 and 503, these three are not compelling the normal behavior. These three are not compelling the normal behavior. Therefore, we are going to call those items as an outlier. We are going to call it as an outliers. So assume that I have a company and that company it is coming with a pattern of 60% in 
CGPA. So obviously, students who are having 60% CBGA, they will be given. And who are not fitting in that, they are not finding the regular pattern. Therefore, such items we are going to call it as an outlier. So as far as outlier is concerned, it is not having the normal behavior as the regular patterns or the regular samples are going to have. So that is the reason why it is not fitting in that. So therefore, we are going to say that these items are not having a normal behavior. They have some abnormal behavior. So that means the characteristics are going to be different. So that has to be analyzed where that analyzing part is going to be taken up with outlier analysis. So we talked about uh, the other word called as an outlier analysis. So some of the applications where this uh, outlier is going to take up, we will be calling it in some of an area where we call it as fraud detection. Generally, people, they have their buying habit, they pay the content, but there are some people who are going to do some malpractice, etc. So those are going to be identified. We say it is to be identified and that analytics part we call here as an outlier analysis. The next word, what we are going to call it as evolution analysis. So in this evolution analysis, we will regulate or we will observe the trend or change over times. We will observe the trend or uh, things over change. Assume we are going to work on time series data. Assume that we are going to work on time series data. When we are going to work on time series data, obviously we will take up a stock market where we will be having the price of a share. So price of a share, yeah, it will say at 1, 2, 22, 2, 2, 22, 2, 3, 22, so 3, 2, 22, 3, 2, 22, and 4, 2, 22. So obviously it goes, it ups, it goes and ups in this way. It is going to vary over change. So that change has to be evaluated. That change will be identified. The trend, the regularities over time is going to be inclusive part of the analysis which we are going to do it in another chapter. We call that one as a evolution analysis. So holistically, what we have done for today. So we started up with a new topic called as the data mining functionalities. We talked about the uh, data mining functionalities. In this data mining functionalities, we were taking about class description which it is taking with two words, characterization and discrimination. The characterization is that I take a pen, it is of color blue, it has length, it has width, it has height. So in this way, I define the characteristic of a pen. Then I take another color, it is in black, but it does, color is different, but it has a length, it has a width, and it has a height. So properties are going to be same, but they are going to be different in form of color. So we call that word here as a discrimination. So the first two concepts have been taken place and then we take some correlation between the first attribute and second attribute, how first attribute is strongly dependent on the second attribute, etc. So that is what we are going to call here as an association analysis. In association analysis, we told that people who are going to buy a computer will definitely buy a Windows operating system. So people who buy some computer will also buy some software. So it is an implicit instruction. So first field and second field, they are going to be related with one another. We call them as an associated uh, analysis. So the third thing we call it as classification and prediction which we it is saying that it is a supervised learning based on models and labeling etc then we talked about the uh, cluster analysis we group the things without labels we call it as cluster analysis so these are all the some of the items which we have taken up for today so we will end up the class here so thank you for joining i'm ending the class here so I'm downloading the attendance.
so due to network issue i continue the class for 5 or 6 minutes more so as it was disconnected in middle okay yeah thank you so 127 students joining hope okay i'm ending the class thank you